All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to the CNET stage in the South Hall, the Las Vegas Convention Center, and live coverage of CES 2014. I'm Donald Bell, editor with CNET, and here we are in the next 15 minutes focusing on drones. Joining me today is Henry Sedu, Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of Parrot, and Jason Cherbini, Vice President of Sales and Marketing at 3D Robotics. Welcome. Thanks for joining us today. Hello. Um, I have to say right off the bat, out of anything I ever see at CES, the thing that draws everyone's attention immediately, turns everyone into children, are drones. I want to know what you think is going on there. Because there's something about drones, even more than any other kind of RC aerial vehicle that just is mesmerizing to people. Uh, Henry, what, what do you think the, the magic is here? I think the magic is uh, flying. And uh, flying is like a, a dream, and we make flying so easy that a kid uh, of uh, eight years uh, can take it, and in a minute, he know how to fly. So uh, it's something that is uh, unbelievable, and the technology make it true. Yeah, and then John, what's yeah. what's been your experience about what what the appeal is coming for people coming to 3D robotics for the drones? It's just being able to get a new perspective on all the regular stuff that you've been doing. So you know, water skiing or snowboarding or whatever, you're able to get a whole new perspective on uh, on what you're doing from the air. And then what's I, I think I, my assumption is both of you are coming to this from different perspectives. What's been for you, Henry? The I know from Parrot. The first time I heard Parrot, it was through Bluetooth headphones. A headset, Bluetooth speakers, and then suddenly, drones popped up, and it didn't. You know, no one was complaining because there was a lot. There were a lot of fun, but what was the the journey for you getting towards this as a product? So we do um, technology around the cell phone. We do products uh, with Bluetooth around the cell phone. And one day, like seven years ago, the company was uh, growing, and I say, okay, now I can do uh, what I dream. And I've seen all those uh, components that you have on a cell phone, the cameras, mm -hmm. the, the accelerometer, and I said, with this, with, it's so cheap now, I can make toys. So I start to, to make toys. I make the first one with a car, with Bluetooth and a camera. And I give to my son and the prototype, and I did not see in his eyes that you know it was something. Right. So I say, okay, I have to do more. So I, uh, I look for uh, something flying, and I found we have to do an helicopter, because in the room, uh, in your home, uh, you cannot fly with a plane. Sure. So this is how we get uh, into, uh, into drones. And then it took us four years uh, to make the first drone uh, uh, for uh, consumers. And then from there, uh, we, we get more ideas and more technology, and now we develop drones also for professionals. I that sounds like a lot of fun. And I think you were really, Parrot, the AR drone, I think was one of the first ones I saw here at CES, and the kind of the first kind of commercial, commercially available. Yes, know, I think for product. the iPhone, you know, to make it super simple, mm -hmm. you know, really uh, like uh, uh, an app, you know, it's not, not more difficult than an app. You have a, a button take off, and it take off. So uh, this is what we, we like, you know, on the technology of today, so you can hide the things very complex, into uh, intuitive uh, things. All right, and now John, you're coming from another perspective here. I know it, a lot of the 3D robotics rigs are meant for more of a professional user. Uh, what, what got everything started off? What's the inspiration behind it? You know, we started, it's a, it's a very similar. So in 2009, we started off making uh, autopilots uh, that flew primarily fixed wing airplanes uh, and then started moving into new technologies that we're able to leverage from the cell phone revolution and the accelerometers and gyroscopes and barometers and GPS um, and, and started moving the, the code that we use into controlling multi-rotors, four, you know, four motors, six motors, eight motors, 12 motors. Um, and, uh, and that's really been the progression, is starting off uh, you know, very simple infrared-based thermopiles that controlled the aircraft and moving into these more complex uh, MEM sensors. Um, and and you know, the end goal is, is ease of use, and, and Henry and Parrot have done a great job at that, and, and we aspire to be as easy to use as they are. And it's, it's, inter it's, it's easy to get that lost in like a lot of what we're talking. We actually just got out of a panel discussion on sensors it's easy to look at these as toys and not realize how much of this technology is reliant on sensors for the stabilization, for everything. Tell me about your latest product, 
Uh, what's going on that makes this the, the thing that you guys are showing off this, this year? So this is uh, Iris. It's our first kind of foray into the consumer drone market. Um, we have typically been a little bit more um, in industrial design um, yeah. style where uh, we're using more aluminum pieces and cut carbon fiber pieces and things like that. But this is our first foray into you know, injection molded consumer facing uh, products. Uh, and along with this, we've also upgraded our autopilots to a 32-bit platform um, and 32-bit uh, hardware and still leveraging the experience that we've had over the last four years uh, with our code. So we've actually created a hardware abstraction layer to take our existing stable code and port it over to the thir new 32-bit hardware platform. So, but this is this is for someone who's not fooling around. They want to. They really want to have a product that's going to get up and take some, you know, controllable aerial shots. Yeah, there's there's I mean, the brushless gimbal down here for yeah. moving the camera once it's in the air. This thing ready to fly is about $800, and so you know, I, I would say you know any sports enthusiast or somebody who really enjoys taking pictures from the air, it's it's very accessible, um, and uh, you know it obviously goes up from there. Um, but uh, you know it'll also go down from there eventually right. as well. So all right, now so, Henry, uh, you've got some you know very high-end products too. But the one that we're most excited about seeing at CES this year is the smallest quadcopter we've seen from Parrot. Tell us about what you've got. So uh, what we show uh, here at the um, at the CES, what we introduce is the mini drone. So it's uh, really a drone for indoor and for the fun. Mm -hmm. So this drone roll. It, but it roll also on the ceiling. Uh, it roll on the walls, and uh, uh, also uh, it fly. So it's really uh, something uh, that we do uh, um, uh, for, uh, you know. Ah. Oh, there go our lights. <laughs> yeah, my kids all uh, over. There, I'm sure. And this kind of gets back to I, what sounds like your original inspiration of trying to find something fun for your kid as well, too. This is actually, this seems like the top of my li the list of my five-year-old's, you know. Christmas I list. think uh, to do things for the kid is yeah. difficult. You know, it's a challenge. Don't believe uh, that we do this because uh, we believe it's easy. You know, <laughs> right. we do it because uh, we believe it's very difficult. Today, right. the kids, uh, most of the experience they have of uh, playing is video games. Mm -hmm. Of course, video games are beautiful. You know, uh, they are very aesthetic, and they show the world uh, a kind of, uh, uh, world of today. But I want to do something that, for the kids, it is as sophisticated as video games, but on the real world. Right. So this is why uh, we get those ideas of those robotics for kids to have fun with uh, the technology of today. On a certain way, you learn. For example, uh, our drones, everything is repairable. So uh, you can find any part, and we put tutorial and videos on the internet. So any kid which is uh, 10 years old can fix the drone, change the part, uh, change the color, and it's a part of the game. Yeah. And so th that gets to another question I had about the hurdles for developing this product. Both of these are, are you know, some products that have had years of development going into variations and other products that you guys have on your belt. What are the what are the struggles that have happened? Uh, what do you see in, in drones that is kind of the biggest struggle against the category growing more? Is it the perception? Like the, even the word drone kind of sounds like a loaded word. Is it safety concerns? I mean, I see, like you were saying, like building something for a child is a lot different uh, process than building something that's going to get up in the air and have a lot of power. What are, the, so what are the struggles? The, for us, the, the safety is very important. We pass all the rules of a toy, so mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, it's uh, uh, legally a toy. So, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, but for us, you know, what is uh, the, the biggest difficulty is um, the technology is going so fast. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, um, it's, uh, uh, it's very interesting, but it's like making surf. You know, I don't do surf, but I imagine, you know, to stay on the, on the surf and to ride uh, from the wave to the beach, it's not easy, you know. So the technology is going fast. New techniques are coming uh, uh, every year. Right. So uh, to, um, to get the good product at the good time uh, using the latest technology, for and me, so is a challenge. I can imagine, too, with the, with the competition now, everyone coming, coming out with the product at a different point, maybe being able to pick up on a different... Uh, wave yes, in the technology. But I think now the category also is more popular. 
And uh, I don't think people are afraid by a drone. You know, like they are not afraid by robots, and uh, I think they like them. Now, the customers are different for your products. You know, this is, you, this is, you're saying this is your consumer product, but this is still a relatively expensive product. This is uh, for someone who, describe your customer, I guess. I'll, I won't put words uh, in your You know, know I, like I mentioned earlier, you know, we, we're really targeting kind of those um, consumer action oriented uh, uh, markets of, of sports uh, photography and, and, um, and uh, taking aerial images from, a, from this consumer perspective. You know, we have a ton of other um, application, viable applications like you know, mining, construction, um, uh, agriculture. All of these are, are things that we're moving into with other platforms. But for Iris here in particular, we're really looking at those you know, action sports, photography kind of markets. Now, I'm assuming both of you <laughs> have heard about Jeff Bezos' claim about him wanting to have a fleet of drones for product delivery. How much are you buying that as a legitimate proposition for, for either he or even a smaller business that might want to have a, a fleet of drones to deliver products? But you know, um, when you have a new techniques, uh, people don't believe. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you say uh, maybe tomorrow we will deliver uh, drugs by drones, and uh, so people find it's crazy. But at the end, uh, everything uh, is done, you know? Mm -hmm. So the question is, I don't know when. But for sure, for something you know, like uh, a drug, you have a pain, you want the thing, why not? You know, so uh, uh, it will arrive. Today, the drones, the usage professional, is to collect data, mm -hmm. collect data for uh, for mining, for agriculture. So it's making photography, mainly making photography, and then process the photography mm -hmm. for uh, different applications. This is the application today for the drone, and there is a lot to do. It's super useful. Um, we have a big hopes and uh, 3D robotics also, also uh, uh, in agriculture. Because uh, if you can get uh, pictures of your field and uh, every month you see how it grows, how much you have to put uh, chemicals, you can put less chemicals, you can put the chemicals at the right place, you can put less water, you can... So for agriculture, uh, the drones should be a very ecological progress for agriculture. So this is a target for the next years for uh, the company who are in professional drones. Mm. All right, what do you think about the, Be the Bezos vision of, of delivery? I, I think he's a little ahead of his time at this point in time, but uh, it's, we, Henry's right, we are gonna get there. I think there are certain ways to create you know, easements and leverage existing um, space in cities that uh, we can do this in a safe and reliable way. I think it's just going to be a few more years before we're really able to scale it. Because you would also have to make a quadcopter that is inexpensive enough to sacrifice, correct? I mean, just I just my my mind goes immediately to people trying to shoot them out of the sky, yeah. you know, <laughs> to make off with a package. Or we will definitely have disposable drones yeah. to where it's it, it doesn't. You send a hundred out to go do a job, and if eighty come back, it's not that big of a deal. Right. Now uh, that also gets to the point of look legal issues, lawsuits, the idea, I mean, with any new technology, people are afraid. I also, I think, uh, legitimately, I would be concerned about, you know, Amazon drone falling out of the sky and, you know, hitting me in the head, <laughs> in, in the head. Uh, I know a lot of people are probably scared about drones because of issues around getting hurt. Is that unfounded? How, how dangerous are these things at, like, a commercial scale version of this? I, I mean, we, you know, uh, we always stay under 400 feet within line of sight and away from people and objects. I, I wouldn't want uh, this, this guy falling on my head either. Right. Um, but I think from the commercials perspective that we were touching on earlier is that it's, it's a matter of creating safe zones for these things to travel in um, and, uh, and you know, improving the safety and reliability of, of the hardware. All right. And then overall, in terms of the formula for the designs, because both of these, I feel like the quadcopter is in a mature state. I mean, I've seen the, the hexcopters and the other, you know, more rotors, more lift, better cameras. But what's the formula for the whole thing that you guys are honing in on year after year? Is it is it making it lighter? Is it the battery? Is it the the range? To describe to me, if not just one specific thing, what the, the laundry list of things are that kind of get dialed in. It's like uh, insects. You know, you have uh, small, teeny bugs. You have uh, large, huge uh, bugs, uh, like 
like planes also. So you don't have a drone for, uh, for everything. Um, the, um, the quadrocopter is certainly the formula, the most uh, modern, because um, it's very robust and uh, it's easy to manufacture. You don't have mechanical parts, you know. So the quadricopter, which is an, a very old idea, the quadricopter is the oldest idea of the helicopter. It's come from the 1910 or 1912, uh, where they did the, the first quadricopter. So the quadricopter for the helicopter is, is very good. But if you need to make a lot of pictures and to go into uh, uh, large fields, uh, you need to, to have wings. Mm -hmm. So, um, but the, 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 the drone is, the, the nice thing of it, you know, is like the aviation in 1920 or 1910, you know, everything is to do. You know, for example, at Parrot, we like to make wheels and flying because we think it's more funny, but also it has more usage. For example, for, uh, for delivery. Sometimes you have roads, you can ro go on the road, and sometimes you cannot, you, you will fly. I don't know, you know. Yeah. So there is, it's really an open field for imagination. All right, and then John, what are, what are the things that you're dialing in the most on uh, kind of week to week? Is it, is it getting it lighter? Is it uh, new materials? Is it processor? Yeah. Sensors? I, I mean, I would say all of the above. I mean, we, you know, we, we've recently moved to this 32-bit uh, autopilot, and you know, we call it a universal autopilot because it is with one piece of hardware, you are able to control multiple pieces. Uh, multiple configurations of hardware. I can control a, a tricopter, a quadcopter, a hexacopter, an octocopter, uh, a rover, um, a fixed wing airplane. So it, it really does depend on the application that you're looking for um, as to what platform you would choose. We feel we have an advantage in that you know our hardware has enough headroom and has the code that backs it that's able to allow it to operate multiple vehicles. So. It, it's honestly, it really is all of the above. All if, the you're, if you're talking agriculture, you're, you're typically talking uh, for larger areas, fixed wing airplanes, for smaller areas, you can cover them with things like hexas and things like that. Um, but uh, it really depends on the application you're talking about as to what you want to, uh, what you want to maximize on your, uh, on the hardware. And today the technology is cool. Yeah. You know, uh, maybe uh, drones will be printed. You know, uh, because uh, the electronics, uh, you do the autopilot for everything, so maybe uh, you will choose uh, what you do and you will print your and drone. This, this does look like 3D printed material, am I right? Is this a... Uh, those are 3D printed lamps. Yeah, so right. I can right. imagine getting pretty crazy with these. Well, it sounds like a lot of fun, a lot of work, uh, fun work to be done in making these more interesting year after year. Thank you guys for both joining me today and talking about the magic of drones and quadcopters. All right, uh, we look forward to seeing more projects from these guys, but we'll be back live at the top of the hour with CES in depth. So stay tuned to CNS live coverage of CES 2014.